So he's trying to make his nation unite other nations. Babylon uniting the world. Now that, that should sound familiar to you. So you can see the different images. See, this was the, on the... Uh, on the left is the image that God gave him in a dream. On the right is the image that uh, Nebuchadnezzar made. It's totally different, right? And of course, we know what 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 happened. What happened with this image? The, the uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would not bit, bow down to that that image, would they? And they were thrown in the fiery furnace. And of course, we know that uh, Christ was in there with them, and He protected them. And in the same way, we'll be protected from the mark of the beast. But the point is, is that it was about worship. And if you didn't worship, you had consequences, right? The first Sunday law, the first Sunday law was called the venerable day of the sun. Now, Constantine, when he made this law, if you read into it, it has nothing to do with Jesus, Christianity or anything. It's actually about uniting the Roman Empire. Just like Babylon wanted to unite the world under Nebuchadnezzar, Rome wanted to unite the world under Constantine. A Christian. He was supposed to be a Christian, and Rome was supposed to be Christian, but this venerable day of the sun, it was about uniting pagans and Christians. Bring us all together. Bring us all together. This is a movement that we're going to see more and more in the last days. They are trying to bring all the religions together. I didn't have time to put all this uh, the stuff that I found. But there was one site that it's called, uh, I forgot the name of it, but they're actually trying to get everybody to sign on to this idea. And what's interesting is the idea is the golden rule. Where did the golden rule come from? Jesus. Jesus spoke the golden rule. But yet Jesus is pushed to the side and the golden rule is lifted up, right? In other words, we really don't want to know everything that Jesus taught, but this one thing we want to lift it up. And they're trying to make all nations and religions come together under that banner of the golden rule. It's interesting, but uh, it's also sad because if you push the person who told the truth out, then you've lost the reason the truth was spoken, right? So you notice now that the image being made, the golden image, to worship, to bow down to it, what was it? It was a violation of the Ten Commandments, wasn't it? Because it says we're not supposed to make, we're not, first of all, we're not supposed to have any other gods before God. But also, we're not supposed to make graven images or bow down to them. And so you see that Nebuchadnezzar's idea was a violation of the Ten Commandments. And people were going to die for this. Also, there were people who stood against it. And, and God was with them. We know that because they were saved from the uh, punishment that Nebuchadnezzar had decreed. So this is a pattern. Now, do we see image, images being bowed down to in any uh, organization or church in our world? Yeah. You know, uh, I have several pictures here. Seems like Mary's in the, a, a large focus of some of this, and it's unfortunate because I, I would I would guarantee you if Mary was resurrected, she would probably just be horrified. Yeah. Don't you think? Being a good Jewish woman that she was, she'd be like, "What?" Right? And even a pope, even a pope bowing to a statue of Mary, so. Take it like you want to take it. I don't know. Listen to what Miss White said about this. At last, the larger portion, at, the, at last, and she's talking about the latter days, at the last, the, at last, the poor, larger portion of Christianity, of the Christian company, lowered their standards, and a union was formed between Christianity and paganism. Okay? Oh, no, I'm sorry. This isn't the last. She's talking about how pagan, how... Uh, worship of images came into the church. Although the worshipers of idols professed to be converted and united with the church, they still clung to their idolatry, only changing the objects of their worship uh, of their worship to images of Jesus and even Mary and the saints. 
We see that. I just showed you that, didn't I? The, the foul leaven of idolatry thus introduced into the church continued its baleful work. Unsound doctrines, superstitions, rites, and idolatrous ceremonies were incorporated into her faith and worship. As the followers of Christ united with idolaters, the Christian religion became corrupt and the church lost her purity and what? Her power. You know, I've had people ask me, why, why, don't, why don't we, you know, why don't we do like the disciples and, and heal people? You know, disciples had power. Why don't we do that still? There's the reason. We lost our power because we let these things come into the church. There were some, however, who were not misled by these delusions. And that's from the spirit of prophecy. Okay, now I said there was two stories in Daniel, right? Two stories. Well, the second story is Daniel's prayer. Now, if you recall this story, we'll go through it real quick. Uh, king Darius, the Greek king, uh, I keep saying Greek, Persian. The Persian king had taken over. They conquered Babylon, and now Daniel's under a Persian king. And Daniel, of course, stood out. Uh, as a Christian, we should stand out, shouldn't we? We should be outstanding and, and we should be noticed if we're real Christians. Well, he was noticed, and but the people who worked with him, they were jealous that he was getting so much notoriety. And so, of course, they came up with this idea. Now, listen to what he said. And the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. So he's a good man, right? Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning what? The law of his God. That is Satan working behind the scenes. Because that's what Satan's always attacking. If you look, what did he attack with Nebuchadnezzar's dream? I mean, Nebuchadnezzar's golden image? He attacked the law of God. What's he attacking now? The law of God. It's over and over and over. Why? Because it's part of God's message to us, right? All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes and the counselors and the captains, have consulted together, and this is them talking to the king, have consulted together to establish a royal statute. Now this is like a law. To make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any God or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the lion's den. So now they're saying if they pray to any other person for the next 30 days besides you, King Darius... Then you're going to be casting, they're going to be cast in the lines then. What's this about? Praying is a part of worship, a petition, right? So they're saying anybody that uh, that gives a prayer to anybody besides you, what? Death penalty. We're seeing the same uh, uh, same what's the word? I lost my word. But it's it's yeah, it's like the same thing. You see the other one was death, worship or death. This is worship or death. That's what they said with the mark of the beast. Pattern. Or, huh? Pattern. Yeah, it's a pattern. Right, thank you. Now what's amazing to me is it's a prayer. The king was a man, right? Prayer to a man. I don't know if you can tell what that picture is. It's kind of dark, but that's a confessional. You know, you go to a man and you ask for him to forgive you. We don't have to do that. We can go to Christ. What about this? Did you know that there are people praying to the last pope? Uh, what was his name? John Paul. There, there are people praying to him for a miracle because if, he, if they get a miracle by praying to him, then he could become a saint. And I think he lacks one miracle and he'll be a saint. And that means you can pray to him even more. Does that sound like something that the gospel would teach? I don't think so. So again, we're seeing that the pattern is the same. Same people involved too. Again, that was a violation of God's Ten Commandments, wasn't it? Because it says we're not to have any other gods before God. And they were putting Darius before.